Shri Suresh Prabhu, welcome to the retreat, sir. Sir, we'd like to know, uh, the fact that India has been following a growth trajectory since uh, liberalization in the 1990s, which has really picked up in the last few years, you know, we are almost touching 9% uh, GDP growth rate, which may have leveled off a little. But as a person with de the deep knowledge of finance, sir, do you think we have the wherewithal, the depth in our debt markets, the depth, uh, the depth in uh, raising capital, in investing it wisely, in seeing uh, transparency, accountability, good corporate governance to ensure good returns for investors. Do you see that uh, the Indian debt markets and money markets can actually fund the expansion that is required in the power and infrastructure sectors in the years to come? It's a very valid point. In fact, uh, we don't have a really a primary or a secondary debt market, the type of market that we really need. Uh, we again need not just debt market, but we need instruments which could fund the infrastructure sector. Uh, in particularity of funding infrastructure sector is that uh, it's a long, uh, long duration mom paper. It's a paper which should be issued in a manner that uh, the cost of issuing of that paper, the, the financial paper, the instrument, should be not front loaded but back loaded. Because if you ask the infrastructure companies to start paying from the day one the interest that is accrued on that, they'll not be able to service it. So therefore, how could you actually match the revenue streams coming from infrastructure sector with the financial cost of raising that money. Could you match that? And that's a big challenge. So therefore, in India, the um, duration, the type of paper that we need, the type of interest that we really need to charge are very critical issues. And the type of need that we have for infrastructure financing is something like two to three trillion dollars in the next 20 years time. That's almost double or triple of the India's economy today. So you can imagine the type of money that will be required. It's not that we cannot generate that money, but the challenge is how can we provide an institutional mechanism to harness that resource. And that is what is really missing and therefore uh, is some issue. But you mentioned about debt, but I'm also talking about equity. Um, in fact, uh, many times we feel that a debt has a cost and equity comes free. In fact, equity has a higher cost than debt because uh, the cost that has to be added to the equity, which unlike debt, is a cost of uncertainty the risk that is attached to the equity because debt holders could still get some money when the venture fails, but equity holders probably will have to forego everything that they have and therefore there is a risk attached to it. So therefore the expectation of returns on equity are far more than that of the debt. So therefore how do you finance equity again is a challenge. So I think next few years time uh, equity and debt raising is going to be a big issue. Again this is not just a financial issue, it's an issue related to the governance, the broad governance spectrum of uh, the country as well as the sectoral governance issue and therefore we really need a proper policy which is stable, durable, uh, transparent and easily comprehendable because sometimes the policy you make it in such a way that everything is there but nobody can understand what the policy, how it will be interpreted finally. So if you have these in ingredients of policy and then institutions to actually operationalize that policy, to implement that policy, this would really be the governance that will be sectoral issue. But country's governance is also very critical because many of times the investors' appetite to put money into a long-term uh, issues like infrastructure would be driven by the fact that how the country is run. It's not just foreign investors but also the domestic uh, investors. So I think we really need to address all these issues together if you really want to bring in infrastructure growth. You mentioned 9% growth rate, but I'm worried that this 9% growth rate has to be accelerated to 10% plus. That's what is our dream. But even to maintain 9% or 8% growth rate, infrastructure will be the key which can actually make it happen or not uh, really make it happen. So therefore, we really need to focus on infrastructure in a big way. You talked about the institutions and you know institu institutionalizing the process uh, and also the process of governance, uh, getting our governance act right. So looking at the institutions in the government, the, for example, the Comptroller and Auditor General of India is a much regarded and venerated institution. but a certain number of commissions right from the Appleby Commission onwards have uh, felt or a certain number of people have felt that you know this uh, the kind of probity that we are looking and the kind of audit that we are looking at uh, government decisions in financial spheres can restrict bold decision making you know a little amount of risk taking to ensure that uh, certain decisions which have to be uh, matched with the, the market realities are uh, you know are spot on and uh, you know do deliver value to the Indian consumer and the Indian electorate. A case in point being uh, Air India at one point of time slashing its fares and giving discounts uh, along the lines of the private air operators 
uh, practice followed around the world, which was uh, you know harshly criticized by the Comptroller and Auditor General. So, where do you think? What kind of institutions do we need for the next twenty, thirty years? Will the institutions that we already have will they do? No, you know there is first of all, see the institutions uh, uh, are not the institutions in the web it will like the bricks and mortars of the institutions are not what institutions are. The institutions are uh, beyond that. So institutions are the spirit of the demands of time mm -hmm. that whether that brick and mortar institutions can be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. So therefore, firstly we need brick and mortar institution. Right. The people, the institution, the legal structure, that is all I would call it a brick and mortar. But beyond that, we also need the spirit. And the spirit will be the one which will be has to be so dynamic enough to capture the realities at that changing times. And therefore, I don't see 20, 25 years from now we can create institutions for today. The challenge is whether the institutions are flexible enough, the institutions are the dynamic enough, the institutions are the robust enough right. to capture the demands of that particular time right. in terms of regulation. Now the challenge that you mentioned that comes in is uh, if you try to deviate from something, probably somebody would say with ulterior motive, somebody would say conformist attitude is always good because nobody can challenge you on that. Right. So I think uh, this again is something which depends upon largely leadership issue. If you have the leadership which is bold enough to decide that I want to do this, like Deng decided to do it mm -hmm. in China in 1978, everybody was saying he's a revisionist. This is a big, uh, um, big condemnation in communist parlance when you say you are revisionist, we are mm -hmm. not the revolutionary. But he knew what he was doing. He exactly knew that he'll be proved right mm -hmm. with a period of time. His famous uh, saying was that when you cross the river, you touch the feebles and decide you don't prepare a road map. Mm -hmm. So these are the type of uh, leadership we really need in countries like India, which has a huge demand for growth from coming from the population itself. And uh, absence of growth would lead to the type of aberration that we are seeing today, social disparity, the insurgencies. I think we will have to address the growth in a big way. So in that case, what do you think of the institution of regulation, of independent regulation? We have had a history of about almost 10 years of independent regulation. Uh, where do you think is regulation, independent regulation, the electricity in particular headed? No, sir, there is an inevitability of regulation because uh, if you want some players beyond the government to work and we have to have a trade-off between public interest, private interest, consumers, producers and then upstream and downstream users of the same resource, we really need a regulation in place, no doubt about that. And I'm not uh, unduly worried by the fact that regulation uh, in India is facing some challenges because it's just a new phenomena. I know some regulations take long time because institutional making is not a one-day job. For example, you had moved the Electricity Regulation Bill in 2001. Yeah, Electricity Act uh, also uh, was moved by me in the parliament. Yes. But I am not uh, worried by the lack of uh, stability in regulation. This is an evolving process. It will happen as long as the people at the right, at the helm of the office, mm -hmm. understand this. If they get moved and swayed by this criticism or something that comes in, then I'm worried. If they are the ones who understand it well and they are going to say that no problem, we know exactly where we want to move, mm -hmm. ups and downs are bound to happen, mm -hmm. I think then not cause of concern. But absence of that mm -hmm. is not just cause of concern, mm -hmm. but it's a catastrophe. So we really need to avoid it.